Jessica Napick is a multi-talented creative and avid paranormal aficionado, best known as the co-host of the popular What's Up Weirdo podcast, where she dives into the strange and unusual alongside her best friend and co-host, John E. L. Tenney. A horror connoisseur with a formidable depth of knowledge, she is also a devoted dog mom, a seasoned spooky traveler, and an ironically charged crystal savant. Beyond her love for the eerie, Jessica is a UFC fanatic and a skilled cosmetic tattoo artist who invented Astrofrex, a trend featured in Cosmo, Vogue, MTV, and more. As a speaker at a uh, as a speaker at paranormal conventions and events around the U.S., her eclectic interests and vibrant personality have made her a cherished figure in the world of alternative culture and paranormal exploration. And explanation. And paranormal explanation. <laughs> Please welcome Jessica Napick. Here we go. I'm pressing the right button. Yeah. I did it. Oh my god, I got a sweat stash from reading that out loud. <laughs> what's up? Hi, can you see everything? Do you see what's going on? Can you see me? Yes. It's, it's, it's so Wait. hard to read a paragraph when it's not shit from chat. <sighs> okay. Hi, it's Midnight Spaghetti. Hello, welcome in, everybody. This is Jessica Napik. Hi. And boy, are we going to ask her some questions tonight. I love it. Let's do it. Thank you for coming to my stupid um, show. <laughs> uh, intro, too, by the way. That was really nice. I um I'm not gonna lie. I did ask Chat GPT what it knew about you, and everything was wrong. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, but I think it's funny because it did say that you are the pioneer of the resting witch face, and maybe that's correct. I love that actually. <laughs> I th I feel like that's true. Yeah. So um. Yeah, I was wondering, what's your favorite cocktail? Because I'm drinking a white Russian right now. All right. Maybe I'll make a drink. Um, I My go-to is typically either vodka water with a lemon and a lime or vodka oh. lemonade. Uh, usually Tito's. Um, every once in a while, uh, gin and soda with lemon and lime. Okay. Nice. I don't know why I can't keep myself in this. You guys are just looking at my fucking kitchen. Oh my god, that's beautiful go. color. Thanks. It's, it's really like bright. I'm actually over it. I'm, I, it's been this way for <laughs> a million years. I'm gonna repaint it soon, but it was fun while it lasted. It's sort of like a haint blue, you know, from the south. It is. Yeah. In person, it's like electric turquoise. It's a lot. Mm, that's actually my favorite well, color. I know. I feel like it's mine, too, but just I'm going to redo it. I need to redo my cabinets. There's just a lot. It's a lot. And I did. I This is not a coincidence. I did wear blue eyeshadow because it is we both it went. It yeah. is Jessica's um, thing, and tonight I wanted to mm -hmm. just suck up a little bit of that, so I also have blue eyeshadow. We both did it. <laughs> Love it. Thanks so I'm wondering... That. I'm wondering, did the spooky life choose you, or did you choose the spooky life? I think it chose me for sure. Okay. Um, I used to see ghosts when I was little in my house. Um, weird stuff used to happen, and then there was like the explosion of like kind of paranormal TV, like uh, Unsolved Mysteries and X Files and stuff. And once it gets you, it gets you. Okay, where whereabouts are you from? If you want to say that. Um, like I was born in Detroit, Michigan, so I live oh. in like Metro, Metro Detroit, which is basically every uh, city that is around Detroit. People just say you're from Metro Detroit. Okay. Yeah. I'm from I'm from the Southwest, so. Are you really? Yeah, that's that. I was I was I'm from Colorado. Oh dang! I love Colorado. Yeah, it's uh it has quite a it has quite a mystique out there. Uh, with the yeah. with the rocks and the and the desert and the sand and the mountains and I'm I miss that vibe sometimes I'm I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I don't know it's crazy out there. And 
So what's your what's your favorite place that you've been? I know you are a, a spooky road tripper uh, extraordinaire, and I ha I have a question. Okay, this is this is my question. If you are organizing a paranormal road trip, what three haunted or spooky locations um, are non negotiable stops, and what are the snacks? Good, great question. Um, I, my last, I think, favorite place that I've been was the Mizpa Hotel in Nevada. Mm. It's like fancy. It feels like you're on the Titanic. It's just very gaudy. The vibe is good. The employees are really nice. Um, uh, so they're probably, and then I'm trying to think what would take you across like several states. Um, what are my other favorite ones? Maybe like Nevada or something. Is that a cool place? Yeah, yeah. Nevada is sick. There's a bunch of haunted stuff there. The Clown Motel, uh, the Haunted Clown Motel is like down the road from the Mispa. I didn't stay there because it's kind of sketchy. But I've heard a lot about bed bugs uh, there. Oh, really? Yeah. That there's every. Uh, I've heard a lot of people complain about bed bugs uh, that Ew, they've gone I'm there, which is real rough. I went there and took pics and stuff. Like it's cool to go outside, and then there's a crazy graveyard next to it. So we did that. But I'm like, I'm not sleeping in there. It's like. Uh, typically on road trips, I don't like those ones where like, you know, where the doors are facing out and they're not like in a hallway and they're all like, mm. I feel like somebody can just like knock your door down. I don't know. Oh, just like kick in the door because it goes in. Yeah, because it's like uh, to the outside. Mm -hmm. So it's like that. Like the Mispa is a regular hotel. We have to like go in a hallway and go down. Um, I'm trying to think of where else I would want to stop. Probably... Ohio What's... State Reformatory. Oh. Where's uh, the Mitzpah in, in Utah? Mitzpah's in Nevada. Okay, Nevada. All right. And then Ohio State Reformatory is obviously in Ohio. It's a haunted prison. It's where they uh, filmed the Shawshank Redemption. It's really fucking scary. Um, What's another one that is like tippy top fave? That's where you've had your craziest Parent, well, one of your craziest paranormal experiences, right? What what happened there? It's just scary. It made my, like, I don't know. When you're, like, sensitive to it, there's certain places that'll, like, um, like give you the wheelies in your belly or, like, make your knees. Mm. Like, my knees get weak when I'm in a really scary place. And okay. the two places that have done that, that have, like, literally made my knees rattle were... Ohio State Reformatory and Evans City Cemetery in Pennsylvania, where they filmed the original Night of the Living Dead. Like, I couldn't even breathe. Hmm. Okay, so oh. it's just like a like a rooty a rooty kind of fear. Yes. Yeah. Like your whole body is like, I should not be here. This is the worst. Mm. But it's also fun. Like I don't. I'm there by my own choice. Like, but yeah. There are certain things that will like viscerally like scare you to fucking pieces and those two places are are that so the mid spot yeah. uh ohio state reformatory and what was the third one i don't know we didn't pick it up probably maybe oh. the amityville house <laughs> i don't know i've been to the amityville house a few times i I obviously just outside i haven't gotten into it yet but i still do plan on making that happen <sighs> It, I came close last time I was there because it was for sale. And then, like, the day mm. I got there, it went into escrow and I couldn't get in. Like, they weren't doing showings anymore. And I was like, motherfuck. But <laughs> I'll still I'll still get in there somehow. But there's I'm a bunch. I've been to so many places. I don't know. I'm sure somebody will get it that you know and then somehow you'll know, get in I there. I hope so. Well, the thing is, yeah, that was the thing is I, I have a bunch of friends on Long Island and they own bars and own houses and shit. I'm like, they would get, they have like, because typically if you, you can't just be anybody and see like a, it's in a rich neighborhood, the mm. Amityville house. So you can't be like, oh, hi, I make $30,000 a year and they'll give you a showing. Like, no, you have no <laughs> business buying the house. So you I'm can't fucked. Get the showing. Right, so let to, me in. they usually do, like, they'll run your, like, if you're able to buy a house before you do a showing. So I was like, yo, I have friends who I could make this showing happen because they actually have money and they would actually be in a position to buy this house. So I was like, perfect, I'll go there, we'll get a showing and just act like we're buyers, not like I'm a weirdo. Um, but <laughs> no, it went into escrow and I didn't get to go in and it still pisses me off. I've been, I was so close, but. 
Where where is that? Is that in New York? The Emmy yeah, Mill? Long Island. Yeah. Okay. Long Island. All right. So it's basically just like a like a horror story sort of situation where like rich people buy a house and they move in and they've never seen it before in their life. Yeah. <laughs> And they move in and they're like, oh my god, it's haunted. Yeah. The guy, there's I've seen some drama too recently with a guy who owns the um Nightmare on Elm Street house, like Nancy's house from Nightmare on Elm Street, um, is just an asshole. And he's slowly put up more and more shit in front of the house so you can't even see it. He has this stupid fence out front. Me and Tenny stopped by there uh last summer, and then now he's put like plants on the walkway so you can't even see like the famous door like what a asshole like why did you <laughs> why buy it why he's like no none of that spooky shit for me we're doing it normal i want normal I plants and normal thoughts when people look at my house but i saw a video of him like legitimately yelling at people too they're like what he's like what are you doing out here and they're like why don't you calm down like he looks crazy he's it's crazy i don't like him we so i was I was wondering, uh, since there's like a lot of blue going on, and one of your <laughs> one of your screen names is "Open My Eyes to Blue," what Ooh. is the story behind that? Wow, nobody ever asks me that. It's actually really embarrassing. Really embarrassing. Well, firstly, it sounds like super duper emo, which it was. It was like when everybody <laughs> had emo screen names, so it's like kind of that because nobody used to use the real name. It was like yeah. fucking band name three seven five whatever, or it was just like a. Oh, I'm in my fucking emotions. You just, whatever. But it was actually, liter it's literally about an ex-boyfriend. And I wish I could change it, but I can't. Because somebody has at Jessica Napic, just the plain at, and, and they've been dormant. Their account has been dormant for literally like six years. And I've been trying to contact people I know at Instagram, Google, Facebook, anything. I'm like, can y'all fucking close this account? They don't use it. It's, it's it's dormant i've tried to dm them they don't check it they haven't posted in years i'm like can i just have my at and my I name have it. used to be a billabong beauty <laughs> that was so billabong underscore beauty at aol.com uh oh we lost her the oh, spirits wait, have oh. intervened okay. I know. I never know if it's me or not. I hope it wasn't me. Oh, but there we're you here. Go. But yeah, it's funny. Yeah. I had other very emo ones, but this is the one that's lasted the longest. I feel like people are gonna be like, if I ever change it too, they're gonna be like, no, but I hate it. <laughs> like when I try like when I'm on shit like this or like when I'm on conventions and I'm like, oh, here's my app. I'm like, that is so fucking embarrassing. Open my but, eyes to blue and everything else goes gray. It's like just not <laughs> worth changing it unless I can have my real at. And I, I'm like, I've, I've even DM'd people on Facebook. I thought was her, and they're like, no, that's not me. That's not my Instagram. And I'm like, fuck. Can I just fucking find this lady? She's got to throw some uh, asterisks and underscores in there, and then we're good to go. I or don't just... want to do that though. That's even worse. <laughs> I just want my at my at. Like, why does she have it? I'm waiting till I feel like there will come a time where Instagram is like, yo, we're we're getting rid of. They were supposed to have done it by now. Like, would they need to get rid of like accounts that haven't posted in like over two or three years? Like, yeah, get rid of them so people can have the at, and they're not doing it. So I'm just waiting. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the luck of <laughs> With getting that emo problem name that you have. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just stupid. Uh, people who are in this game understand my frustration. Oh yeah, I mean, hello, I'm Spectral Sybil. You know, like I know. Uh, what if somebody else had that and they didn't post in five years? You'd be like, can I have my app, please? I'd be pissed, but now I'm a Twitch partner, so I can tell them to email whoever I want if I want to change my name. <sighs> on, just on Twitch or on any... On Twitch oh, only. Oh. I don't matter at all. Oh, so. I need to get somebody at Facebook. Or, or Meta. Meta. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I mean, they're really good at um, listening to their audience, so I'm sure it'll it'll all be fine. No, and they're literally we, really bad at it. I know. We, we I'm won't never be taken contact anyone. over by robot algorithm overlords or anything. Everything is fine and great. Yep. Yep. Everything's great. Yep. So how many how many different jobs have you had in your entire lifetime? Because it seems like you are just well-rounded. You've been a bartender. You're a cosmetic tattooist. 
Um, uh-huh. According to ChatGBT, you're pioneering nail painting techniques. That's not, <laughs> nope. I don't know. <laughs> That's probably the one thing I haven't done. Um, I've had a lot of jobs. I used to, I grew up working in record shops. So I worked in record shops for a while. And record shops and skate parks were like where I started. I worked mm. in skate shops and skate parks for a long time. Um, uh, and then it was like, yeah, wait tables, bartending. Um, there's Toadski. Um, Making himself but known. Yeah, cosmetic tattooer now, podcaster. Uh, convention speaker. Uh, yeah, I do all the things. I like to keep, I don't know, I like to diversify. If you just do one thing, it gets very boring and you get burnt yeah. out. And if you do two, three jobs, you can just get burnt out on all of them at one time. <laughs> what are you a professional of? What would you say you're a professional at? Like, without um, a doubt. I know I'm really good at my fucking cosmetic tattooing job. I know I am. I see other people's work. I see how it comes out. It's not good. I'm very, Mm -hmm. I'm such like a, um, I have, uh, what's it called? Imposter syndrome with like everything in my life. But that's like one thing where I'm like, no, I know I'm good. I know I'm good. Of course, me too. Um, that, and I don't know, just like organizing fucking I do. I don't know. Like keeping all the shit straight for the podcast, all the socials, all the events, all the. Yeah, you're wearing everything. a lot of hats. I I know that I game. Do. I've got I've got nobody else. It's just me doing yeah. everything. So. It's so much that people don't see. Like doing all the right stuff, doing all the right tags, like answering everybody, even as simple as answering everybody's comments and stuff, so they don't feel yeah. ignored. It's like it's a full time fucking job. It's a absolutely. Lot. Um, and also, too, I think I'm like just like a professional hype man like anybody around me who i see doing cool shit i'm like i want to hype your shit i want to repost it i want to help you out like so many people are out for themselves in this like i hate when i look at somebody's whole twitter and their whole feed is just about themselves it's like where's your retweets of your friends why are you up your own ass you're you i really have to commend you for that you're so good at sharing stuff and i think you inspire a lot of people to share stuff because since i made this event i've never seen i've never had this many reshares in my life for one event so something's going right with that attitude because absolutely nobody gives a shit most of the time so thank you for that it's it doesn't take much that's the thing it's like i think people think that people are going to unfollow them if they like retweet too much or like share other people's stuff too much. It's like, no, who's going to be like, ooh, they have too many talented friends. I'm going to like, why, why would they do that? Why would they do that? Like, it's cute and nice to put people over. Like, you should be a fan of other people and not just yourself. That's weird. That's weird energy. And also, when you do well, your friends do well. And when your friends do well, you do well. And I especially think that in the Twitch community, because a lot of streamers sort of pit themselves against each other and they don't want to share their audience or their viewers or whatever. But in my opinion, if you're collaborating and you're sharing and doing all this stuff, you only get better, both of you, from it. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. And it's and it's it's slow, but it's like even if like one of those shares, you get like one or two new followers. That's like great. Like maybe you would have never reached them. It's so simple. It's like such a low effort thing that everybody can do and it's so important and especially like uh, people you know who have etsy shops or just like small businesses like getting somebody a whole new client is like a big deal that could be like Mm -hmm. their bills for the month you don't know so this is really important exactly yeah um i was wondering what's your sign Oh, I'm in Aries, in case I wasn't obvious. <laughs> mm. I was just a bossy, crazy Aries. Yeah, I've had best friends that were Aries, of course. I know yeah. what it's like. We're very loyal. We're moody. We're honest as fuck. Um, any, any guesses? Mm. Who? Yourself? Are you Aries? Yeah. No. Yeah, no, right. no, 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 no. I'm not. Oh, no, you're not. Wait, who no. is? Who is? I, I, don't, I don't know who is. I'm not. You are. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Ooh, <laughs> what is your sign? A uh, Scorpio. Oh, dang. Okay. Obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean. Okay. 
So we're both like, born on Halloween, and uh, Tenny doesn't believe me. He called me out, and he called me a liar live on stream when I told him that. I the audacity. You. The audacity. That's because my dad and my brother are both Scorpios, so I'm familiar. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, this is curious. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, do you want to talk about the paranormal, horror, or UFC, or crystals? Because I've got bullet points. Oh my god. Um, probably paranormal. I feel like we build this as kind of a paranormal chat, so we should get to that before people get bored. Yeah, they're all related, though. So, okay. Yeah, that's great. First paranormal question: What theories do you have that deviate from the usual paranormal stuff? Let's think. I feel like... Mm, okay, well, this is a crazy one that I haven't talked about on the podcast yet. Um, okay. But I did This talk is not about a podcast. It. This is... Well, I know, but I did... <laughs> Most Just people kidding. know everything about me already because they listen to the podcast. So, like, I'm like, this is a new fucking tidbit of information. But I talked about it last weekend. I spoke at a paranormal convention called Midwest Boo Fest in Indiana, and mm -hmm. I brought this up, mm -hmm. and I had never brought it up in public before, and I was really worried about it. Is that... Who was making that noise? Is that you or me? Is that... Do you hear the AC? Because I'm sweating like a... Oh, yeah, that's fine. I'm, fine. I'm sweating... I'm, I'm, when I have You're guests fine. on, I'm fucking zoned in and I'm sweating my ass off. You're fine. So anyway, so the crazy thing was I I have a psychic thing. I don't know. I'm clear audience, so I hear weird okay. stuff in my head. I hear people talking to me in my head and it's not me and I don't know who it is. And it's all different voices, it's all different times, it's all I've heard different languages now. I don't know who the fuck it is. So anyway, so I have a psychic thing going on, but it also crosses over into my dreams so i feel like i have like um premonitory dreams and just like weird dreams of like information where i'm like where is that information coming from so anyway kind of recently i had a dream that i'm i was i don't even know where we were if we were on earth or in fucking space but i was talking to aliens and they told me that they don't like to be called aliens they like to be called contravexin and I was like, in my head, I'm like, what the fuck is that word? What does that mean? So, but when you break it down, contra means against, like the yeah. meaning of the word contra yeah. means against. And then vexed or vexin means to be annoyed, um, you know, be vexed by, be mad, be irritated by. Yeah. So contra yeah. vexin means to me means the unbothered. Like they're not annoyed by anything. They're just, vi they're existing on vibes only. So I'm like, that's so cute. I hope that's what they're really called. So Contravexin is my new alien thing. I know it's crazy. I don't expect anybody to believe me, but I'm like, it tracks. That tracks. Like, yes, they would be the unbothered. They don't have any problems. They don't have jobs. They're just chilling. Yeah, I love that because it's like they are indifferent. They're unbothered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, so... That's a thing that I'm on that nobody else is on because maybe aliens didn't talk to them in their dreams. I don't know. That's not weird at all because let me tell you, <laughs> the people that watch this show have seen some truly weird stuff. <laughs> and that's beautiful. I know. I really liked it. I thought it was so cute. Um, oh, that's one thing. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other paranormal. What do you think ghosts that... really are? That's tough. I don't know. I don't know if it's time slips. Like it's, uh, I think a lot of like things, maybe noises you hear in your house is you on a loop, either in the past or in the future, mm. like you repeating okay. your own um, activities. Like every day you walk from the living room to the kitchen and maybe you hear a weird noise in the dining room, but like in a time slip, it's like you walking through the fucking dining room. Um, I like that. I've never heard that before. And yet it seems so normal and duh, of course. Yeah. So there's that, mm. but then I also think too, it could be like, I don't know. I don't know if even, I would, I would call it people being stuck. It's like, do they, do they pop in and say hi and then go back to where they were? I don't consider it like a stuck. I don't think they're, I don't know. I, who knows? We'll never know, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't, there's the other thing where it's like, it could be like, what if we're reincarnated or what if we've had past lives and then we're like, hey, that's me in the future. Let's see what I'm doing. I don't know. Like it could be there's so many. There's so many things it could be. 
I don't know. It could be, yeah, and then so I don't know. It could be fucking aliens too. Some people think that like ghosts and aliens are the same thing, or like bigfoot yeah. and ghosts and aliens are the same thing. But that's why it's so fun, and that's why it's so annoying when people act like es experts or act like they know everything. It's like you don't know. Well, you will never know. It's the fun part is the theorizing and the believing in anything. When you're like, this is what it is. Period. That's not fun. That's yeah. not fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's why basically just ghosts as a subject matter is just rich philosophy that connects to all different uh, parts of being a human, uh, you know, like the past, history, like literal like legends and stories and art and yeah the human experience it touches everything and that's why i love talking about ghosts because even if you don't think they're dead personalities floating around they're still relevant you know they even if you think they don't exist in a way that you see them in movies or whatever they still matter because they yeah, are they hold something on. yeah they yeah. hold something yeah and i don't yeah exactly is it and if it's not us and it's them, is it just them wanting to be, like, remembered or thought about? Like, they don't want to be forgotten about? Or, I don't know. It could be anything. But they can't exist without us. And I think that's the best part about it. Mm-hmm. It's true. Because you mostly figure out, you, you find out more about the living than you do about the dead. Because you need the living to even talk about it. <laughs> that's true. This is true. So, if you were a dead personality floating around, uh, where would you haunt uh, after you die? And where are you going? And wh how are you going to make yourself known? I don't know if I would make myself known, honestly. I would just hang out. I really, I've talked about it before, but like I had my last dog for 14 years mm -hmm. and I didn't, I don't ever leave him, al I never left him alone. He comes with me everywhere. Um, so I, I didn't, and I never put him on a plane, so I've never gotten to go to, like, Europe at all. Oh. Um, so I told myself when he passed, I'm like, I need to go to Europe, I need to see all the things, I spend, like, a month there, see everything, and then I'll come back and get another dog. And before <laughs> that could happen, I adopted Toad, so I've still never been to Europe. So I'm like, unless I get, like, a PJ and Toad comes with me, I'm not going. So, like, I feel like if I was a ghost right now, I would just go to Europe and see mm everything I've ever wanted to see in my life and like go everywhere, go in all the castles, see all the old stuff. Cause I know people say that we don't have anything truly old here, which we really don't. So I think you'd, I think you'd eat it up. Are you afraid of I flying? Know. I'm definitely afraid of flying. I literally hate it. Um, but BarkBox, like the company BarkBox, they've recently come out with Bark Air. They yeah. have literally a dog airlines. Um, and it's like the whole cabin is open and I think it's probably limited to like six to eight people and you're just sitting in there with your dog and they're all running around. Um, they're not like in a carrier. So I'm like, I need it. I need to go on Bark Air, go to Europe. But the round trip, because it's a PJ, like the round trip ticket is like $15,000. Oh, fuck. I know. So... <laughs> I feel like if I was like a, had a bigger following at this point, I could make it happen. But because I see them sending some people for sure. But do I have a quarter million followers? No, I do not. Would you but, would you leave Toad with someone to babysit him or you don't trust anybody? No, no, not for that long. No, it's it's a very codependent relationship. Like I can't he sleeps with me every night. Like I couldn't sleep without him. I couldn't. It wouldn't be fun. Like seeing all that shit, I like seeing I like seeing him seeing shit. Like it's just it makes it better. And like taking our pictures different places and like sharing that memory with it. Like he's my kid. Like mm -hmm. I don't know. It would I would not I would have like ten percent as much fun if he wasn't with me. It was fucking it would be the worst. I would just worry the whole time. So it's like he he goes with me or I'm not going. I'm the same way with uh with dogs. I I've always been the same way. I've always had uh wiener dogs. And uh, you, is he a Boston Terrier or is he a Boston Terrier mix? So my last dog was a Boston Frenchie. And then when I got towed, they told me he's just a Boston. But in my opinion, he looks exactly. Uh oh. Sorry, did I dip again? Are you oh, yeah, there you are.
My bad. Anyway, so I think he's part French, but I'm not sure. But if I had to guess, I think he is. But it doesn't really matter. But he's a. He's like sitting out here. Like so, hang on, I'm outside. He's like sitting she, out here, so awful. Cody, you wanna come here? Come in here. Come here. Oh my God! I think it's time to release the hounds. Come here, Cody. Oh, Toad. Hey, he's got a backyard and everything. That's great. He does have a big yard, baby. Do you want to be on the camera? Hey, Toad. Oh my God, okay. live Toad footage. Looks like Toad's key. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Toad. Oh jeez. Oh, it's an honor to meet Toad for the first time. Yay! He's such a good boy. Now he's going crazy, babe. It looks like it's gonna rain. Babe, they just wanted to see you. They just wanted to see you. I, I'm, uh, I, I'm gonna, I will, uh, in, I will introduce yeah, okay. you to, to Release my dog here in a second. Release, Release the hounds! So I have to say that out loud, and then magically she appears. Do it. <laughs> so, okay, you've been to uh, Bobby Mackey's. Oh, there she mm -hmm. is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There she Jump is. The baby. There's my girl. This is Runa. Oh my god. Oh, she can't oh, see her. No head. Wait, there we go. Oh, This is Runa. She's a, a, a wire hair wiener. So she looks like an old man. And she was born on Midsummer, so I named her Runa for a runestone. Oh my god, I love it. And there she is, and she's very insecure. I love her. I love her. Runa. <laughs> and very Runa. long, but very sweet. So, so uh, she sleeps with me every night also. No. <laughs> and Big I'm yawn. also Big yawn. I, I've never I've never met anybody to date that loves their dog as much of, as much as I love my dogs because my dogs are also my children and I kiss yes. them all the time and I talk yeah. to them and yeah. I'm not I'm not going to have any kids myself. So it's just nope. doggies for me. Same these. And thank these. That's the thing, the way I see it too, and I'm sure you do too. It's like they didn't sign up to be like, like we made this agreement. Like you are my homie, yeah. I'm your mom. Like no, I'm not gonna leave you all the time. That's not the deal. And also, since I'm terrified of flying, I'm like, if my plane goes down, if I literally die and I never come back, your quality of life is gonna be so different because I know that I treat you like. A little king so like yeah. no one else is gonna do that so if my traveling ends up something bad happens to me and i don't come home like that affects his life and that gives me guilt and i'm not going mm. <laughs> unless he comes with me so dog mom guilt yeah i have to go i i'm also coming to the states soon and i'm going to twitchcon i'm going to uh i'm going to the southwest again and to florida and I have to leave Runa for three weeks, and I hate doing it. <laughs> but I, you know, I live in I live in Europe, so I have to go. I have to go visit my family every now and then, like usually once a year. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you? Why do you have to go to Florida? Because that's where my parents live. That's upsetting. <laughs> yeah, and they're everything. They're everything that you think they are. So. Oh no. no. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, right? <laughs> Critter <laughs> Jason says, tell me about it. Yeah. And by the way, I am reading everything in chat, so don't think I'm ignoring you, chat. I, I am reading it. I can't see the chat. I wish I could, but hi, if there's any pates or friends in here, I literally can't see it. I'm sorry. That's absolutely fine. Oh, so I was going to ask you, you went to Bobby oh, yeah. Mackey's before oh, yeah. it got it got knocked down, right? And you had a crazy... I don't know if it's knocked down yet, but okay. it's coming soon. But anyway, what's the sorry? And you had a crazy experience there. Um, oh, yeah. And my question is, what was the experience and what would you sing for karaoke at a haunted bar? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I've been to like a ton, a ton of haunted locations. I've seen a lot of full body apparitions. I've heard shit, but I've never gotten like touched before or pushed or anything. So at Bobby Mackey's was the first time that something like touched me. I was like leaning on... There was a, a little gift shop and I was leaning on the case. Like there's a case with, I don't even know what's in it. And something like, like held my hip. Like imagine like you're at a bar and your boyfriend's like oh. standing on your left and you know, they put their arm around you and kind of cup your hip. 
Yeah. Like, that's what it felt like. I'm like, okay, well, and I'm in this hey, little like, lady. Like, joint bar. I'm like, okay, some ghost guy just put his hand around my hip. <laughs> but so that happened well, there. Good. I know. Um, but okay, but that place is sick. It was sick. I don't know. They're, they're so allegedly the portal to hell is there, or whatever yeah. they call it. It's literally it's the brutal to hell, bro. It's so, it's so underwhelming. You, <laughs> it's like a hole. It's not even barely a hole. It's like a dirt floor in a basement. So it was kind of underwhelming, but it was still sick. The property itself was sick. It was really big. We got like, um, you know, some cool, we did SS method in there. We got some cool, there was like some shadow figure type stuff going on. Um, but anyway, I guess as far as karaoke, I, first of all, I don't really do karaoke. I think I've done it okay. maybe once or twice in my life. <laughs> um, I do it all the time. Singer. No, um, you're not supposed to be. If you're a good singer and you're doing karaoke, everyone's like, boo, fuck you. Get off the stage. I know, you're right. Yeah, it needs to be <laughs> shitty. I think this is like really going to come out of left field, but I think it would be Tupac, How Do You Want It? <laughs> okay, damn. I love that song. I know all the words. So there's a left field for you. Wait, can I show you to my fucking, hang on. Yeah. My UFO shape clear. Wait. Pander, Pander Sarah says portal to Mel. <laughs> uh, portal, to, portal to Matt. That's my UFO chandelier I have in my wow. dining room. It's, it's hot pink and it changes colors. Did you make it? No, I ordered it. Oh, but that's I finally really hung cool. it recently and I'm obsessed with it. That's why the light in here is weird because it makes fucking weird light. But Awesome. I love it. I love it. Totsuki. Hey, you that's guys awesome. are getting a background house tour right now. It's great. Okay, uh, Runa's still here, and she wants to go, and, okay, see you later. Look, can I just show you how okay, long she is? Runa. Look at this light. Mm. <laughs> Listen, Toad <laughs> weighs 35 light. pounds. If There's no way I could pick him up how you were holding her right Damn, now. Damn, that's a chonker right there. He is a chonker. Come here, Toad. Okay, hey, oh, wait. Are they gonna meet? Runa, look, there's a dog. Look, there's a dog. Look, there's a dog. Look, there's a dog. Can you say? Wait, Ooh. say. Ooh. Ooh, there's Wait. a dog. Oh. 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 There's a crazy tail. Crazy tail. I don't know what the tail's for. I don't know what the tail's for. Okay. <laughs> We're so silly right now. I know. I love it. But that's how I always am with my dog. I'm so silly. People are like, is she okay? Like, Tells yeah. us fast. So am. It is so hard to keep myself in this mirror, bro. <laughs> I'm really struggling. I'm really but you, struggling. you're you're Jessica Napic. No boundaries can contain you. That's yes. true. It's all right. You know, it keeps it dynamic. Side. Keeps them guessing. They don't know your next move. Right. I'm over here. I'm over where am I? Who? Where is she? Where is she? Nobody knows. <laughs> My giant mushroom is back there. Oh, I love mushrooms. I don't know if you ever see any of the things I share on the stories. Pretty I much do. the only thing. I'm nutty about shrooms. Me too. I have mushrooms all over this place. Do you forage? I don't, but you, your little cute little hat. I saw your Instagram video. Wait, look at these. Don't talk about how dusty my table is, but I have these cute mushies on the table. They're like oh, they're vintage. Super vintage. I love that. Yeah. Glass mushies. Um, wait, hang on. I have another baby mushy over here. Wait, Flatwoods oh. Monster, but also there's a little oh, mushy. Wow. Cute. I don't even have these much mushies laying around. I, I just have the, <laughs> I have the real ones. <laughs> <laughs> I loved your net, your footage with the net on your head. I'm like, this is so sick. I oh my god. Oh my god, it's so necessary. The mosquitoes are so bad. And they have these little they have these little things. They're called they're not horse flies exactly. Um, but basically they look like spiders and if they get on you, they remove their own wings and they crawl around you like spiders. And when they bite you, they remove, they like cut open your flesh and they lick your blood what out. What the fuck are you talking so about? So we're we're putting on hats. No. For no. that. And they 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 bite mostly cattle and moose and stuff, but um, get away from me. So that's why I wear that hat. <laughs> that's the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so yeah, and if you slap them, you're they don't die. About. They're crazy. We don't have that here, do we? Whatever you're talking about. No, I don't. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. 
It's fucking nightmare fuel. Don't bring those with you when you come visit. Absolutely nightmare fuel. And my friend told me that he had them stuck in his hair for two days. He has like long, beautiful <laughs> Viking hair. Long, beautiful, blonde Viking hair, and he had apparently them just stuck in his hair even after showering for two days. Crazy no, stuff. I will shave my whole head. <laughs> Crazy. No uh, okay, all right. We we have only gotten through two bra two brackets. <laughs> I've got I've got more. Um, we're we're already like forty five minutes in. It's gone really fast. That's cool. Okay. Okay. We're all right. Be... Okay. What's Don't next? Sweat. Don't be sweaty. I can't stop being sweaty and bloated. <laughs> it's kind of my mo. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> okay. What's the best horror movie you've seen in a while? Oh, uh, shit. So there's a really cool French vampire movie. It's kind of out right now, but it's not on VOD yet. It's called The Vordelac. It's so fucking good. Okay. Um, it's, it's in, like, some small theaters right now. It'll be on streaming soon. Um, but it's, like, a period piece, and there's a weird vampire, and it's just, it's beautiful. It looks like a fairy tale. Like, it reminds me of... um never ending story kind of okay like, just like a beautiful movie it's beautiful so the Wardalac is one um lisa frankenstein i'm obsessed with mm. uh, that was out this year i love lisa frankenstein i loved abigail uh what are my other tippy tops this year oh oddity okay one out. I think oddity is on vod now i think oddity is so good and it's so scary it's a uk horror movie it's good. This year has a lot. I have a letterbox account. It's Long legs. Have you seen that? Yeah. You have letterbox. Okay. Yeah, I have a letterbox if people want to see my. I have like a best of the year list at the bottom of my letterbox. It's just at Jessica Napic on there. Um, so I keep like a running list of my best of the year horror movies, and then you can see all my recent ratings too. Um, but yeah, Long Legs was sick. Me and Tenny saw Cuckoo two nights ago, and it was not good. It was a real letdown, and we've been waiting for that movie for a long time. But I did like Long Legs. Long Legs is sick. I do need to see it again because it's way weirder than people think it is. It's not a straightforward mm. true crime movie. It's very weird. So I think I'll notice a lot more on a rewatch, but I did really is like, it like it. Is it like Art House? It is, but it borders, it gets like sci-fi-y. It gets crazy. I feel like okay. people want it to be straightforward true crime and it gets sci-fi and i think people were like this is not what i expected and i, and I hate when that happens because it's like a movie has no responsibility to be a certain movie for you like it went a different way because it's its own fucking movie like you don't yeah. write the movie like just so just because it didn't live up to what you thought doesn't mean it's not a good movie like you're just jumping the gun on what you thought it was gonna be about I noticed that on your Twitter that you're sort of hesitant to say ever that a movie was really bad or not. And I was wondering what makes a good horror movie versus a bad one, in your opinion? I really like when shit is weird as fuck, but it still needs to make sense and it still needs to come around to like some kind of resolution. And there's been an awful lot of horror movies recently where it's weird for the sake of weird. And in my opinion, yeah. it doesn't story and it doesn't have a resolution and then you're just really fucking frustrated mm -hmm. um so i don't like that i i feel like it, there still has to be like a fucking plot at yeah. the beginning and the end and a, it has to have the format of a movie you can't just show me like skin of Rink, for example a lot of people like skin of Rink. i'm like that's not a move it's not a movie what is that i don't i don't it's so bad it's so bad like you can be experimental but it still has to be a movie and have a, like yeah what is that I don't, that bums me out. Yeah, we have, thankfully, uh, we have a Discord movie night every weekend because I'm worse, I, I, I should watch more horror movies, but I just always forget and I'm always overwhelmed with my life. So I always forget to watch horror movies. And I think, uh, what was the one, Laszlo, we just watched? Uh, oh, Hellbender. Oh, I love we just Hellbender. Watched, we just watched Hellbender. That was a wild movie. Interesting love, take on witchcraft. horror movies of the last three years i love that movie yeah it was very very interesting uh way of shooting and i, I like the take on witchcraft actually mm -hmm. it was it was a bit of a head scratcher interesting movie very beautiful film though very beautiful yeah that whole family is sick they've been on our um what's up weird alive oh really 
on our YouTube. We got to chat with them for a bit. They're cool as fuck. They have a new movie coming out soon called Hellhole. I know it has like the same thing in the title. I, I don't believe it's related in any way to Hellbender, but I'm really excited to see it. And then they had a, um, another movie come out last year too called Where the Devil Roams. And it was good. They love I hell. Love, love hell, huh? They love hell. <laughs> well, I didn't I didn't love it, but I liked it. It's just like I love Hellbender so much that like when I saw Where the Devil Roams, I was like, dang. Like it's just nothing's going to be as good as hellbender in my mind but but they're super talented and all their movies are sick and they're so nice and the whole family is so cool and they shot that during covid right that movie uh, something I like think that so. i think so yeah they're sick they're sick if you had Love. to pick a character from a horror movie to be your roommate for a year who would it be and would you get along I feel like there's two ways to go about this because you could say somebody like that you would want to be your BFF or you could say a cute horror movie boy that you would like want to be your BFF. <laughs> um, yeah, this is horror character. And my other question is a different sort of, yeah. This is just kind of any all over the field. Um, Who would be like a cute fun for, oh, probably Lisa Frankenstein. Catherine okay. Newton and Lisa Frankenstein is so funny to me. Um, or Catherine Newton and Abigail. Just Catherine Newton in general. I love her. You can ask Tenny. I, I, she's, I love her. He loves Dan Stevens, and I love Catherine Newton. She's the cutest and best. Okay, Leslo, can we watch Lisa Frankenstein? Uh, we gotta we gotta see that. I've heard a lot about it. It's gonna be literally your new favorite movie. It is such a joy, and this is where I think it went wrong. First of all, it's by the same person who wrote jennifer's body so obviously it's going to be iconic it's going to be like a slow burn like people once people find out about it they're gonna be like this is my favorite fucking movie it's so cute it's gonna be a cult classic but anyway so i feel like the marketing made it out to be like a young adult movie like it was like this cutesy kind of horror like beetlejuice whatever but mm. it gets so fucking twisted like the movie gets so weird it's like for the it's for us weirdos and it's not for kids. It's so good. I just recently watched it again, and it's so good, and I love it. Okay. You're going to be obsessed with it. Trust me. All right. I'm, I'm really trying to do my best. I believe it's on Amazon Prime now for free if you have Prime Diddy. Oh, Lisa, Lisa Frankenstein is going to be on Amazon Prime? I think just recently it hit Prime. Okay. Nice. I could be wrong, but I think it did. Yeah, I I have everybody knows that like Wednesday the Wednesday on Netflix like I've released videos that I hate it and I've talked a lot about oh, it. Why? And, uh, <laughs> because it's just for me that's not it at all this in the spirit of the Adams family. It's it's not like Harry Potter wizard school girl saves the world like Wednesday yeah. Adams is the anti-hero and she delights in the macabre and she delights in people getting murdered. And this is just like Harry Potter but spooky and like also her parents are like like her dad's a sex pest in this movie. Like, <laughs> I don't I don't understand it at all. I so I, I agree. I, I literally agree with everything you're saying, but I still liked it. I don't know why, but I I 100% agree with everything you're saying. Yeah. It's a very shoppable uh series. Like it's making the money for the looks. But but I mean, honestly, I can't really complain because that only does good things for people like me and the spooky community like people eat that shit up and if you sure. like spooky stuff, you'll like this channel, and great. You know, Wednesday, Beetlejuice 2, here we go. And I hope it's good, because Beetlejuice is very dear to my heart. I know. I think it's going to be really good. I have a good feeling. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay. We're going to love it. Which paranormal entity or horror movie villain would make the best co-host for What's Up Weirdo if John needed a break? Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, shit. They have to be smart and chatty. I feel like most of the horror villains don't even talk. <laughs> True. Or um, they're just like, hey, it's time to die. Who would be funny? Maybe Stu from Scream would be funny. Um, shit. Who else is like a chatty Kathy? Uh, okay, let me think. 
I'm like going through every horror movie in my life in my head. I mean, um, that's you. You are uh, have an incredible depth of knowledge of horror movies, and I run a fucking spooky comedy channel, and I haven't seen barely anything. I feel like a Randy from Scream too, because he would talk a lot. Or yeah, because he knows every horror movie. I don't know. But then also, who are like ones that know about the paranormal though? Um. This is hard. I like this question a lot. I'm trying to think of like who are fake paranormal investigators too in movies. Like the people there was like fake paranormal investigators and poltergeist. Maybe those fucking people. I don't know. They That's said Freddy Freddy Krueger is witty. Uh, Pinhead has some he good is. lines. But Hannibal he's also Lecter, like literally a child predator. So I don't know if he can be my co-host. <laughs> Hannibal Lecter. That's tough. That's tough too. I don't know. You guys are on some shit. Like Stu is a murderer. Yeah, but. He's not, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's tough. We're having, a, we're having a tough time finding a moral horror villain. Because because somebody who replaces John Tenney has oh, to be Dexter, moral. Does Dexter count? That would be cute. Yeah, is he a, a villain? Murderer. Is he a villain? Yeah. He's a murderer. Okay. People think he's, Tenney won't even watch Dexter because he doesn't like the premise. I'm like, he kills bad guys. He's like, that's nobody's allowed to do that. And I'm like, well, that's why the <laughs> fucking show, I swear, I'm like, Tenney, suspend your belief for a second. <laughs> Beetlejuice? Okay, that would be a good substitute. I would love Beetlejuice would be to co-host funny, my yeah. show. I feel like we, we would have to not film in the same place, though, because I feel like looking at Beetlejuice, he probably stinks. <laughs> I'm like a big smell person. I wouldn't be able to sit there and talk to him if he fucking stinks. I have a surprise for everybody that's no longer that much of a surprise on October 31st, and if you think I'm gonna be like a cute Lydia Dietz, I've got news for you. So, Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. It's going to be grotesque. That's what I have to tell you. One of our whoop out events, not, I feel like a couple Halloweens ago, I did like Beetlejuice fucking makeup for our, I don't know if anybody noticed, but I did it. That was my theme. Like you went full Beetlejuice? No, it was like Beetlejuice glam. Like I just, oh, Beetlejuice glam. Like green and purple. Nice. Yeah, it was like drag Beetlejuice. It was not like nasty, like fucking um, boils by the mouth Beetlejuice. <laughs> That's what I love to do. I love to be disgusting. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> you do it. Oh, and speaking of, you know, people getting hit in the face, you love the <laughs> UFC. I do. I do. I've been a UFC freak for about seven or eight. No, eight, eight or nine years. Ooh, like eight years. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I don't, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know how the bug bit me. Well, I used to watch it when I was younger with like my dad and my brother. And then I like, obviously like did whatever, grow out of it or like went through whatever. And then I like, it kind of got reintroduced to me and then I just got obsessed and I go to the events all the time now and I'm on um, MMA Twitter and just tweet about fights every weekend. It's a very nasty place. It's actually... I've been getting away from it a little bit because it's a really toxic fucking fandom. And mm. especially for women, like, they will fucking say some of the worst shit you've ever heard in your life to you on Twitter. And it gets really exhausting. And then also some of the, the fighters are absolute pieces of shit, too. And they'll say some really disappointing stuff online. And you're like, cool, I don't even want to be a fan of you anymore. I hate everything. So <laughs> you get burnt on it every once in a while. And then you come back around when something, like, really nice or hopeful or exciting happens. And then... It's just hard. You get invested in a lot of people, and then when they turn out to be pieces of shit, you're like, well, I need a break. Well, I was I was sort of like, okay, UFC seems like maybe like a very divergent interest, but then I was like, wait, it's like a bloody spectacle. Of course somebody mm -hmm. who loves horror would love UFC fighting. So well, then I think I get it. Too. Like, I think a lot of people are like, oh, they're just beating each other's brains out. But that's not it. Like, there's training. They train forever to be, like, mixed martial artists. There's different disciplines that you, like, master and get belts in different things. And then when you put it all together, you're, like, very talented. And, and different people are talented in different ways. So, like, let's say, you know, one person's an expert in five things and the other person's only an expert in four things. Then they get in the cage 
And the other person gets beaten because they're not as good at that other part of the mixed martial arts. It's like very exciting. It is it is a skill. It's not just oh like, yeah. We oh, found these two guys in fucking Alabama. Let's let them fight. <laughs> like, that's not that's literally not what it is. It's very skilled. It's very disciplined. It used to be a little nastier, I feel like, when I used to watch it when I was younger. Like you could very well like break somebody's arm and that is mm-hmm. either, well, you can do that now. But yeah. Um, it used to be a lot more common then. People wouldn't give a fuck. Now, if you went into every fight that you have and you did that, you would be like considered a piece of shit. Like, you only kind of do that if you have to, and you and you do it very slow, and the other person knows it's about to happen. And if they think that they can stay in the fight, they will let the other person break their fucking arm, and they will mm. keep going. So it's it's crazy. It's exciting. It's just a lot. And also, this is the other thing that people don't realize is like. Baseball has a season, hockey has a season, football has a season. UFC is all year round. They are on every single weekend. I think they only take off, not even kidding, like maybe eight or nine weekends a year. So I'm watching this every fucking weekend. It's a full time. It's crazy. So it's a lot. That's awesome. Hey, Video Hell System, welcome in. Thank you for the raid. Today we are talking with Jessica Napik, who is just a horror extraordinaire, uh, paranormal weirdo in the best way. I mean that in the best Mm. way. And uh, we're asking her some questions. We're talking about her love for UFC. Thanks for for coming in, everybody. Um, Okay, my, my question is, which UFC fighter would you choose to be your sidekick in a horror movie? Oh my gosh. And you could be like, oh my god, we're fighting the villain. Or you can be like, the villain. Hmm. I feel like I would do it as like, we're fighting the villain. So I would have to pick somebody fucking huge and somebody really good. Uh, H-Dub says, oh my god, Jessica, your eye makeup is fantastic. Thank you. Um... Uh, what I pick? I don't know. I like Derek Lewis a lot. Derek Lewis is a heavyweight, but he's also very funny and silly. Uh, so I feel like that would be fun because he could kick ass, but he would also make it fun. I guess that's my answer right now, Derek Lewis. And I've met him before, and I have a picture with him, and he was very nice. Okay. Um, this is a dumb question. Here we go. <clears throat> no dumb questions. <laughs> You're doing great. You've been invited to a UFC match between two uh-huh. cryptids. Who's fighting and who are you betting on? Shit. Mm, God. Okay. Let's say. Well, do I? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm I'm going to try and rig this so I win. I do bet on sports. That's the other thing. I do have I was going to ask if you're fast. better. I do. I have been doing absolutely shitty the last while. I was doing really good when I first started. I don't put a lot of money on it, though. Trust me, I'm only, it's like it's just a little amount. And then I usually leave what I win in the, in my account so I can just keep betting with a little amount any fucking way. Uh, <laughs> listen, I will say. I it's like money. either it's crypto, it's like crypto bro shit, or it's like betting on the whatever, know. you know, like That's, do what you will. <laughs> I know. I got to pick something really tiny. So I will say, is the Jersey Devil tiny? Can he be tiny? Or maybe a fucking Fresno Nightcrawler thing? Anyway. Oh. I'm trying it to think seems like he would be a kicker, though. I know. Yes, you're right. I'm trying to think of one that's tiny. And then the one that I would pick to be the winner that I would bet on would be the Hodag. From Wisconsin. What, what's it would that? Be because it's huge. It's this big green thing with teeth. You would love the Hodag. Hodag? It's like a, yes. It, are you able to Google things while we're on here? I am. Um, I can't. They can't see it, but I can see it. Let's look up the Hodag. It's H O D A G. It's a giant green fucking. H O D A D. H O D A G. Oh, that. Yeah. So I would pick a tiny cryptid versus the Hodag, and then I would put all my money on the Hodag, and then it would win, and then I would win all the money. Okay. Hodak seems like you don't want to mess with it. Yeah. No. But also, he's probably just friendly and really cute in our, his own way. What What is the legend of the Hodak? Where does that come from? Um, I don't know. I can't think right now. I feel like it's not real. <laughs> it's literally not real. You're but people, so good at coming up with answers on this spot. I would, my brain would have anyway. exploded. 
I know I don't remember the lore. I feel like obviously it was just like one person said they saw it and that's all. And now they're like, oh, <laughs> we're going to make our entire city of Rhinelander fucking Wisconsin about the hoday. I made a I made a movie where I also invented a ghost. So like I understand that. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. I like when stuff like this is actually this ties into horror and cryptids and investigating kind of. So there's a, one of my favorite horror movies of this year is called Frogman. And it's obviously about the Loveland Frogman. And in the movie, it's very cute because they go to the town and they've obviously like fabricated these things and put them mm -hmm. around and filmed it. So there's like signs about the Frogman and there's a cute little like wooden thing where you can put your head through it and act like you're the Frogman. And there's just like cute stuff around town where they like embrace their monster, right? But then when you actually go to Loveland, there's literally nothing. There's nothing. There's no Frogman sign. There's no, fro hey, home of the Loveland Frogman. Like there's only like one shop that has a shirt. I'm like, but in the movie, it's so cute because they're like, I'm like, oh, it should really be like that. They're like, why don't you embrace <laughs> this weird thing that you have? It was all just a, an invention of pop culture, and it's not actually like that. I know. I wish it was. Even if it was just the tiniest bit more, like if they had... That's why I like Rhinelander and the Hodag, because they have a Hodag store. They have a Hodag Airbnb. They wow. have a giant statue. Like, Loveland doesn't have anything. They don't even have a Frogman statue. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are we doing here? Fucking missing out on a really good tourist income is what they're doing. I know, just get a frogman. There was a, there's a very cute little coffee shop and they had little buttons that had the frogman on them. So I got one of those, but I was like, bro, this is like this could be a thing around here and y'all are not doing it. <laughs> hey, thanks for following Boo Hag. I think I know you from uh Oh, I hi Boo Hag. I saw them at um uh Midwest Boo Fest last weekend and they were very oh. lovely. And I gave them a bunch of tater tots. So, yeah, you and Tenny love the the, ta the taters. <laughs> we do love the tots. I, I too love we do taters. Love Toad is so comfortable right now. Oh my god, look at Comfort Lord. Comfort Lord, Comfort Lord. Oh, no, I made a move. He got awkward. Sorry, buddy. And if you have any questions for uh, Jessica, please use the channel point redeem for ask a question so that I can see them in a list. Um, how, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Jessica, it is. We are an good. hour. You're still good? I'm okay. Still good. Yeah. Got a, I've got a couple more questions. If I see some uh, questions popping up, I'll ask those. Uh, Max is testing, testing. Thank you very much. The Nerdifer, I think you know each other. Um, mm -hmm. Has Jessica ever purchased a haunted object? How does she protect herself from possible spooky items? So, I don't... Okay. I don't really buy stuff that obviously says online that it's haunted. That's weird. Um, I do have one thing, though, that used to belong to Lorraine Warren. Mm. Um, it was before she passed away. Her, what is it? Her daughter-in-law uh, was, or, yeah, I think it's her daughter-in-law. Anyway, was selling some of her stuff. Because they, they went through this thing before she passed for a while where they were, like, selling stuff for her. They raised a lot of money for animal shelters and cat shelters. They would sell bracelets and, like, some random odds and ends from around Lorraine's house. Um, so I bought this little thing. It's, like, a 70s wooden plaque with, like, an owl on it that mm -hmm. they said hung in Lorraine's kitchen. So I have that, and I also said, I'm like, if I buy this, can you include one of her business cards? And they said, yeah. So they sent me one of Lorraine's, like, um, like real, like, ghost hunter business cards. Nice. So I have one of those. Um, but the thing that I do that, like, is, like, I, I don't talk about it that much because I don't know <laughs> if I... I'm allowed to do what I'm doing, but I take little pieces from <laughs> the haunted locations I've been mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. um, and it's typically nature elements. So if I'm going, like the Amityville house, for example, I took like some grass from the lawn. Yeah, like, like you're just like a little talking. goblin. Like I'm literally a goblin, right? My rule is Don't whatever I it. take, it has to be disconnected. Like, like, I've taken stuff from inside haunted places before, but it has to be, like, on the ground. It has to be, like, in the basement, on the ground, like, rubble. You know what I mean? I, it, mm -hmm. I will not take anything that's connected to the I, I won't. Yes. So I won't, like, vandalize, but I will take a little pebble or a something. So then, yes, yeah, so I'll show you guys because I have a fucking pretty good collection going now of like and this is crazy people are probably like oh cool you have literally elements from all these haunted places in your house you're probably haunted as shit so it's the objects whispering to <clears throat> you those are the voices 
So all these little jars in here, wait, are, can you guys see this? Hang on, I think I have to open the cabinet, hang on. So there's like jars. Those are the voices. I know. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, haunted location elements in here. Um, I've, I've also got a collection of jars. Why is it always yeah. that with us, you know? Why is it always jars? Because we're witches, that's <laughs> why. But yeah, so I have that, but oh, I can show you the thing that I was talking about that I got from Lorraine. That'll be cute. Hang on. So here's her. Oh, here's wow. Her. It's like a Victorian lady on it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. here's yeah. my number. Call me, uh, <laughs> ring for me on Saturday, thusly. And then here is the thing that hung in her kitchen. Oh, I mean, I would take something like that. Everyday object. I know, you know, exactly. So, those are my Lorraine Warren pieces. Um, but no, I don't, like, go on fucking eBay and be like, ooh, haunted objects. Like, I have stuff that I've, you know, gotten from places that, like, maybe is haunted, but anything typically that's advertised as haunted is, like, people just trying to make money off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. There's, there's a lot of. I mean, I think maybe. I mean, honestly, I think within the last ten years, the whole like paranormal uh, people buying up houses, charging exorbitant prices for tours. Also, there's like a, a, a few streamer friends I know have wanted to go uh, stay at the houses and whatever, and they say that they're not allowed to stream there, and then they definitely oh, yeah. want them to go to the gift shop, and then, I mean, maybe you know which house I'm talking about, but like... I <laughs> I've been there twice, and I didn't pay either time. I got to go for free at Walmart, oh. so... Nice. Yeah, everybody, it's like hot, hot, hot to have a haunted house now, and it's just like a lot of weirdos just that are in the houses now that are just yeah. making money from it. And honestly, I think energy. that's how you haunt a house. <laughs> yeah, your badass energy sucks. Yeah. It does suck. There's quite a few. And luckily, the three locations that I can think of right now that are owned by not so great people, I've already been to. So I don't really need to go back. So I feel lucky in that way. But there's definitely a few locations right now that people are staying away from because it's just like, no, I'm not going to support you being like gross or like being very um, exploitative, like putting fake fucking dead bodies like on the ground. Oh, in right. Locations. Like, what? I know that which is house so that is. Yeah, very well, and I, also I think that's something really interesting in terms of like this genre, this this way of making a living, right? It's like whenever you make the implicit explicit, there's something so wrong about that, right? Because like that's the whole yeah. journey about like the afterlife and the paranormal. It's a sort of humanity's journey into what we think about the past and these legends these houses have or whatever maybe true crime there's something there's something there that is interesting and whenever you make the implicit explicit like putting a dead body on the floor because like hey this is exactly what happened this is how it was that to yeah. me is so weird it's yeah yeah exactly what you're saying it's not leaving anybody any room to like imagine what happened but then also it's like no respect whatsoever being showed to anything that happened there. Like, can you imagine yeah. if you died in a tragic way and somebody made a goofy, like, diorama or, like, <laughs> like a fake setup of your whole death? Like, that is nuts. That's so gross. There's no, there's no, rev like, that's the, that's one of the nicest things we can do for the dead, right? Is honor them as humans, as living humans. And when you don't have any, like, reverence... Uh, yeah. Or respect for the dead. I think that's one of the oldest things that humans have for each other is reverence for the dead, reverence for the no longer with us. <laughs> when you put, yeah. like a yeah, janky exactly. ass corpse on the floor. I know like, it's, it's oh. really hideous. I don't know for five seconds who would think that was a good idea. Like that's so gross. <laughs> you see, it really so, happened. It really happened. Mind's yeah. eye. Um, Panther Sarah asks, any yummy non-meat fast food or comfort food recommendations lately? Firstly, hi, Swan. I'm obsessed with you. I think you're the funniest person ever. I'm also obsessed oh. with Swan. <laughs> Let's just turn this into a Swan fan hour. Um, <laughs> Swan Fest 2024. Yes. 
Currently, my new obsession is Condado Tacos, which I didn't, I had it when I was in Ohio, and I didn't know that we literally have several locations here in Michigan, but they're also in other states, so if you have Condado, it's C-O-N-D-A-D-O, it's so good, it's like a chain, but it's like smaller, they have really good tacos, they have fake chorizo tacos, they have guacamole. Nice, because you're vegan, yes. right? Technically, no. Uh, I try to eat vegan most of the time, but I do fuck up sometimes. No, yeah, same. I would, I would call myself veg slash almost vegan, but um, yeah. But yeah, uh, there is really, and I've noticed on my last couple of road trips, there's barely anything for us to eat. I end up eating a lot of Taco mm -hmm. Bell, but I wish some freaking chain would just come out with how hard is it for any chain to get fake nuggets can we just get fake nuggets anywhere anybody yeah. use the same fryer i literally don't even care can we just get some fake nuggets nobody's doing it why is it that hard <laughs> yeah i okay. always have a hard time eating in america everywhere i go usually i just load up on margaritas and mexican food and that's kind of all i do when i'm back yeah, that or mediterranean is really good but right yeah. now like go to chains and shit there's like nothing there's nothing that I was eating at Del Taco like every day when they got the Beyond Meat and they got rid of it and now I don't even go there anymore. Oh, there's nothing for us. The beauty of fake nuggets is that they can be made with anything. Exactly, that is the beauty of I fake know. nuggets. Why can't we get something? It's crazy. Like it's honestly, and just for like their their making money's sake, I literally can't believe Burger King or McDonald's or some big ass chain has not made fake nuggets yet like what are you doing literally what are you doing nobody wants your dusty fucking veggie burger that is not good <laughs> i feel i feel privileged because there are there are veggie nuggets around oh, these yeah. parts yeah yeah y'all got everything over there every time i see an article they they do they clickbait us and be like oh this chain's getting fucking fake meat blah 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 and you open it and it's always in the uk it's always in europe i'm like motherfuck yeah it's not fair. Yeah, it's almost like Europe cares about its food or something. Yeah, it's almost, yeah, it's almost like they're fucking years and years ahead of us. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> um, Akatul wants to know, what were some of your horror favorite horror paranormal conventions to date, and do you have a con bucket list? I really want to go to San, San Diego Comic-Con. I know that's crazy because oh. I'm not a big comic person, but they have a lot of movie stuff. They have all the movie stars there. I really want to go to that one year. But um, you can go to TwitchCon in San Diego on September. Oh, hey. that's it. I'll be I there. wish if it was closer. <laughs> I know that the couple places you said you're gonna be are so fucking far. They could not be yeah. farther from where I've I actually am. never but. been to uh, Michigan or any places near the Great Lakes. I've actually never been to that part of America or New York or anything. Well, I have a big, huge, king-size fold-out bed in my in this couch that I'm sitting on. If you ever want to come here, you can stay at my house for free. Can I sleep with Toad? Yeah. Oh my god, wow. <laughs> what a <laughs> privilege. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's oh, yeah. so kind of you. <laughs> Wait, where were we going? Oh, the cons. I'm like, yeah. I forgot the question. Um, I went to a really sick con um they do it every year it is what the fuck is it called horror hound uh horror con in cincinnati they, it, i think it has a couple of different locations but the one in cincinnati i went to with katie webb and we met oh, a bunch love of love katie people. webb we love katie webb i know we love katie webb she's my best friend um but yeah it was it was just like a lot though i in my opinion they let in way too many people and you couldn't even literally walk it was too much because they have they have the best lineup i think they're doing one next month and Catherine newton's gonna be there and all these good oh. people are gonna be there and i'm like i don't know if i have it in me i can't do it again it was nuts you it was too much you couldn't walk and then it makes the lines really long so if you want to even meet anybody or get their autograph it's just like you can't even get you can't even it's a lot, but yeah, when we were there, we met Devin Sawa, we met oh Bruce Campbell briefly, we met Hellraiser, we met, like, the Scream people were there, we met Art the Clown, the real Art the Clown. Oh my god, I've been Art the Clown on a stream, and oh that god. shit's not easy. <laughs> that, mm. that outfit is not easy. No, that, yeah, around his mouth and stuff, like, the when you do the real mouth, his mouth is, like, black. Yeah. 
<laughs> but he was nice. The director was very nice. Uh, we met them and a bunch of people. That con was sick. I would love to go again. I just wish they wouldn't. Even if they made the price. That's what I don't understand. A lot of these cons. It's like, can you just double the price of the ticket and let in half as many fucking people so we can mm. all have a fucking chance here? Like, yeah, it's too many people. Nobody can walk. Nobody can do anything. So it's a lot. But <laughs> that con is sick. What other con do I want to go to? Uh, there's quite a few I've never been to too. a paranormal con. I, it's because I oh know God. nothing ever happens over here, and I have always wanted to go to a, a paracon in in the states. And I, I, that's on my bucket list. Just go to a goddamn con. We'll come here and go to one. Which us. is the best one? That's hard. I don't know. It, it's hard. I don't, well, Midwest Boo Fest that I was on this year. Yeah. I think they're gonna do it again next year. I would highly recommend that one. The vibe was great. The um. The people that they will and won't have <laughs> on the event are great. Um, yeah, like, how do I know very, if you're on it? Okay, I know it's a good one, but, like, how do I know yeah. if I'm going to go to some janky-ass paracon? Um, I would say, especially lately, especially what's been happening, is, like, see what, like, who you really respect and like and is a good moral fucking compass that you like in the paranormal. See who they do and don't follow. Mm. And, um, you know, make your judgments from that and, and maybe think about why they don't support that person. And if, yeah, and, and like who they're on cons with, who they won't be on cons with. There's definitely been a start of a separation in, in, um. It feels like that. I mean, I'm on the yeah. sidelines, but it, it feels like that because I'm very interested in the paranormal world for whatever reason i mean i don't know what the fuck i'm doing over here i'm doing twitch i feel like nobody's over here on twitch doing this sort of thing yet so i i kind of feel like i'm out in left field but i feel like in the future a lot more people will come to twitch to sort of stream more paranormal content but i i gotta i gotta stream at a paranormal content i gotta go there i gotta do it yeah that would be sick yeah i know a lot of cons do like to do live we're supposed to do, I want to say we're supposed to do one in Chicago next year where we do a live podcast. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I can yeah, always um, help you. If you ever need help doing live stuff, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a live queen. I know how to do it. Well, yeah, thank you. I do not know how. I'm flying to spaceship right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm a pretty bad tech person. Tenny usually handles our live streaming and our... I do make our Patreon videos. I do make trip vids of mm -hmm. where we go. Like, if we go to a con for the weekend or if we go on a trip, I'll make trip vids. And then we give those to the Patreons. And those are fun. Some of them end up on YouTube eventually. Some of them don't. Um, some of them are just, like, silly or private or whatever. So we keep those in the Patreon. But, look, I, like, last October, I went to the Apple Orchard with my dad. And we got, like, cider and donuts. And it was very cute. And cute. Awesome. I'm not putting that one on on youtube that stays in the patreon because yeah. like it's just like you know close to your heart so we have some that are just for us just for the pates because they get us and speaking of speaking of what's up weirdo and the pates uh when are we going to have a what's up weirdo haunted detroit event as Janak. that we're throwing around obviously we would love to it's just a lot of work we're so stretched thin with everything that we do yeah. i i and i'm such a bad person at like releasing control of certain elements and like mm -hmm. delegating because i just want to do it all so it's all done correctly and like to my standards so like if i know that if we do a con uh i'll have to i literally am gonna need help so it's like but we, please we please do. ask me i know like we don't know each other that well yet but seriously please <laughs> ask me for help if you I really need it. Appreciate it i'm Seriously. a fucking i'm a little whiz kid this is, uh, you know max helps me I a lot but I, i'm a little whiz kid with the with the vibes and the and the graphic design so please oh ask God, me if it. you want to outsource. I love your graphics, dude. I always love your graphics. I love your vibe. I love your whole page. I love everything you do. Thank Seriously. you. I love everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I guess I guess I'll sort of uh wrap it up. Uh I want to know what's your hottest paranormal take? What's your your hottest tea? Oh god. And maybe it's a person, maybe we have to name names, but like what's some hot takes? Hot takes. I don't know. I just 
Let me think. I guess just like don't tell, don't let anybody tell you what to believe or not believe in. Like, don't tell, like, if somebody tells you, like, oh, you can only do witchcraft this way, uh, no, that's not real. Do witchcraft any way yeah. you want. If somebody tells you how to investigate shit and this is the only right way, no, do whatever, however you want. Like, there's no progress or new ideas that can be realized if you're just fucking doing what other people are telling you to do. Literally, do whatever you want. This is fun. There's no borders or boundaries in what we're doing. Like, literally have a blast. Yeah. If you want ChatGPT to write you, uh, you know, a witchcraft little thing, a, a ritual. They could. It, it do could. It. I'm, I would say I'm very much like a lo-fi person. So I would say something more like, hey, see what you have in your kitchen? Yeah. Write all the ingredients down on a piece of paper, put them in a hat, and be like, okay, when I pull out three, that's going to be my spell. And then do it. Like, have it be very, like, organic. Have it be like, oh, the universe wanted it this way. That's what happens. So you can do anything you want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like art. Just do it. Exactly. Just start doing it. Exactly. That's what usually yeah, the paranormal and art for me place, are. Go do it. Yeah. Yeah, the paranormal yeah. and art for me are very interconnected, and I feel like a lot of people don't see that, but that's my way in, because I think channeling your creative force, channeling the other side, or whatever you think it might be, I think those things are the same. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's my entryway into the paranormal, is somehow it's all related to art. I studied art, art history, uh, and I'm I'm... I'm doing this and I'm trying to figure out a way to tie in the paranormal technology, art, and philosophy, I guess, and comedy. And it's messy. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great. I love it. That's I've always been really, really big on making stuff your own. Like you there's however, no matter what the field is, no matter what the topic is, there's endless examples of people doing it their way or a certain way it's your job as a human, as a unique human to step up and make that thing your own. So do whatever you want. That's I, I, I love to, I love to end on that note. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming over here. Yeah. And can you please tell the people what are pates and how to get more of you, how to get more Jessica <laughs> Napic? Uh, you can listen to our podcast, What's Up Weirdo, on any platform, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, I'm at Jessica Napic on Twitter. I'm at <laughs> Open My Eyes to Blue on Instagram or at WooPod, W-U-W Pod on Instagram. Um, yeah, and then the What's Up Weirdo has a Patreon. It's uh, patreon.com slash What's Up Weirdo. We have like contests. We have live streams. We have trip vids we have whenever we have events they get the tickets first um mm -hmm. we go to a lot of uh advanced movie screenings here in detroit and we let the patreons come with us to those there's like and like in person wow yeah like nice yeah we're we're tight with a lot of the pr companies and the movie studios and they let us sometimes see movies like hella early and the screenings are very tight amazing and like hey, you can bring you know, eight to ten Patreons with you, and then yeah, that that goes straight to our. I'm flying over. I know, do it. I know. I know. I wish more of the pates lived closer so they could do those. But what are you gonna? Yeah, so what are you doing during spooky season? Anything planned? We have an event in October with Adam Barry at a place called Felt Mansion in Western Michigan. Um, there is cryptid lore there too. These things called the Melon Heads. Um, supposed to be tiny, weird humanoids in the woods. Um, but also the the mansion is haunted. A guy built it for his wife and then died shortly after and then she died and it's haunted. But it's a stunning property. Me and Tenny have been there. It's in one of our Patreon videos. But yeah, so we're doing a three-day event with Adam Barry there. It's not like you have to be there all three days. It's kind of like you can pick a day. Um, but it's October, I want to say... Whatever the Friday, Saturday, Sunday is. It's like October 25, 26, 27, or like 24, 25, 26. I don't remember, but yeah. So Adam What Mariel state is that in? Up. It's in Michigan, but it's Michigan, in Western okay. Michigan. So from where I am right now, it's about three hours away. Um, but yeah, we'll be there for the whole weekend. And then we'll have full 
we get to do investigations at night of felt mansion and then adam barry gives a talk and i think the vip tickets you get a copy of his book nice. and we'll all just be hanging out for the weekend so that's going to be sick I, like that's when you were saying like what what concert people go to honestly i think a lot of people are getting like more into like the, these small intimate events you can actually yeah. like hang out with people and get that FaceTime and not be so like chaotic all weekend. So I'm like really looking forward to that event. And then, um, yeah, I haven't posted it on our socials yet. I've posted it on our Patreon, but the uh, felt mansion, the location, I think it's just feltmansion.com. Um, I With think the F? tickets are available. Yeah. F E L T okay. mansion. Uh, I believe the tickets are just on their website right now. So you can go look at those and the details of the event, even though I haven't posted it yet, but. Um, yeah. And Akatul just purchased uh, some toys for Toad, by the way. Oh my god, cute! <laughs> He's gonna be so excited. He got, I gave him something last night, and I think he already, where the fuck is it? I gave him, here, oh, wait, here it is. He bit it, but you can still see what it is. Hang on, he got, wait for it. Oh, wow. Bride of Frankenstein cutie pot wait i can't get it in the fucking <laughs> hang on hang on hang on there we go he has a little dress on but he oh, wow. bit her he bit her body off but he loves to shred him wait. huh he's a shredder wait here you go got here hit by the wait. tornado got hit by a tornado he's a tornado i'm trying to get him in the camp what there you go what's his oh, favorite now treat bite on now bite on treat? He loves salmon treats mm. and uh, uh, lamb. He's a big salmon guy. Like, BarkBox makes these little salmon bite jerky things that he yeah. loves. Wait, now I got a floof in your mouth. I give the same thing to Runa, the dried, the dried direct foot pieces of meat. Yes. Yeah, he loves he's a big salmon boy. He likes nuggets, chicken, um, grilled chicken. Nice. Um, nice. But yeah. Go, All right. Go, have any questions go. for me? Because um, I'm about to take you backstage. We gonna, when are we going to hang out? I would hang out with you in approximately one month. If I was Dude. going anywhere near you. Dude, I know. Can't you just get... Well, you're obviously not driving from Florida to San Diego. You're flying, right? I'm driving from basically the area I grew up. I'm going to make a little road trip into the Southwest and then go back to San Diego and then I'm going to visit my parents at the end. We'll so, just do yeah. one more bingo bango and come. Well, it's going to be, if I do, it's going to be basically when you're at Felt Mansion. Not in October. I thought you were going in September. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm home in all of September. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Think about it. Think let make somebody on here crowdfund you ticket to Metro Detroit. I mean, I'll do it. Somebody buy her a plane ticket to Detroit, please, so we can hang out and then we'll make a video and then we'll put it on the internet. Oh yeah. And and um I I will I'm I'm very tall though. Are you okay with that? Well, how tall are you? <laughs> I'm, very t I'm like I'm like six foot. You are not. Are you really? I'm very tall. Yeah. So oh, yeah. All right. Well, you're taller than me. I'm five seven, but oh, okay. It's not. It's not that dramatic. It's not no, that it's dramatic. Not, I'm not going to look like a tiny baby next to you, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. All right. Please stay with me. I'll take you backstage. Everybody, please give a big round of applause with your imaginary hands. Hey guys, this is so fun. Imaginary Have hands. Okay. What last words? Have a good day. Love you. <laughs> And please subscribe to the What's Up Weirdo podcast and become a pate and get more Blue Eyeshadow and John Tenny Time. <laughs>